Wow, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Dire Besties channel. Jazz over here, and I know it's been a minute since we've uploaded something on YouTube. So. Off the bat, apologies for that. We've just been super tied up with other projects, but we are back, and we thought it'll be great to come back and do a super informative and educational video. So that's what we have here today, um, and today's topic is going to be insulin 101. So as you all know, insulin is a hormone. Uh, that sort of converts the glucose we get from the food we eat into energy for our body to use. It's a very, very important hormone, without which a person cannot survive. Um, so, you know, when your body is not producing any insulin internally, we have to take it externally. So anyone with type 1 diabetes will be on external insulin for their life. Quite a few people with type 2 diabetes are also put onto insulin, uh, depending on their management. Also, I just sort of in installed, uh, reorganized my Apple Watch, so please excuse the notifications. Uh, Alright, so what is the basic um, effort of an insulin regimen? It is to mimic the natural physiology of the pancreas. What you can see in the green section over here is the blood glucose levels of a normal body when we're eating something. What you see in the purple section is the body's natural secretion of insulin. As you can see that there is a constant secretion of insulin even in times of fasting and rest. But whenever there is the spike in the glucose, you also see a spike in insulin. This is what we are trying to create or I would say recreate when we're taking insulin externally. So a little bit about insulin production, right? Insulin is produced in the beta cells of the pancreas, of the islet cells. Um, the alpha cells of the pancreas are responsible for producing glucagon. Now a little bit more scientific, okay? I'm gonna put on my scientist jacket over here. The beta cell actually produces a molecule called proinsulin. The proinsulin is then broken down into two other uh, molecules, which is insulin and C peptide, which is why you might know at diagnosis for a lot of type 1s, we also check the C peptide level. Because if your C peptide is low, it means that, that your in body is not producing insulin. If your C peptide is slightly higher, it means that your body is still producing a little bit more insulin. But most people with type 1 after a couple of years have very, very, very minimal C peptide, which also means that we have absolute like zero production of insulin. Let's move on to types of insulin. Now there are two main types of insulin. One is human insulin and one is analog. Human insulin is not like the insulin that we're producing inside, but the structure of it is identical. It is still synthetically made, but it is the structure of the molecule is very, it's, it's exactly similar to human insulin. Analog insulin, however, has a few amino acid changes and a few molecular changes, which gives it the special desirable quality of being absorbed um, uniformly. On this side, you see the human insulin getting injected into the subcutaneous layer of the skin. And over here, you see the analog insulin. As you can see, the human insulin sort of clumps a little bit under the skin and the, the absorption is not always too predictable. The analog insulin, however, is a very, very structured absorption, which is why um, a lot of doctors also prefer prescribing their patients with analog insulin instead of human insulin. However, uh, when you talk about price comparison and price points, human insulin is cheaper than analog insulin, which is why we see it being used more widely uh, because of affordability. Now let's talk about insulin characteristics. Insulin has three, any insulin has three characteristics. The first characteristic is onset. Onset of insulin is the time before the insulin actually starts working. For example, if I'm taking Novo Rapid, the onset is about 10 minutes. So I would normally inject it 10 minutes prior to my meal because it takes 10 minutes to actually start working. Certain insulins have onsets of 30 minutes, which means you need to inject 30 minutes prior to a meal. Certain have an hour, certain have just five to 10 minutes. So that is what onset means. The second characteristic of insulin is peak. The peak means that it is during this period of time that the insulin is maximum effective and it's really doing its job well in the peak. 
and the duration which in Hindi we call pooch is basically the tail of insulin which means that it is still continuing to work not at maximum efficacy but there is still certain action of that insulin happening. So it's very important for you to know the onset, the peak and the duration of the insulin you are using so that you can better make treatment decisions for the same. Let me give you a real life example for this. If you do not know the duration of your insulin, for example, let's say a particular insulin I'm using has a duration of two hours, which means that for two hours after the peak, it is continuing to work a little bit. And let's say I am going to take another insulin shot within that two hour gap in that period means that my insulin will actually stack and that could result in a hypoglycemia. So what I would do is wait for those two hours to get over and then take my next insulin correction and not sort of hastily decide. Knowing the characteristics of your insulin will actually help you manage your diabetes better. Now let's go to types of insulin. One is fast acting, sometimes also known as short acting. One is called intermediate acting. And the third one is long acting. Fast acting or short acting insulins are used as bolus insulins to have before meals. In fast acting, we have one section which is the rapid acting insulins. They are analog insulins which have an action of, which have an onset of about five to 15 minutes, a peak of one to two hours and a duration of about two to four hours. This is for example, Novo Rapid Humalog. These are examples of rapid acting insulin. Within the fast or short acting, we also have regular human insulin. Regular human insulin has an onset of about 30 minutes to one hour, a peak of two to four hours, and the duration of four to six hours. Again, these are the two options, like I told you initially, human and analog. In fast acting, you have these two types. Intermediate action insulin is absorbed slower and lasts for longer. The two types are NPH insulin and pre-mixed insulin. A pre-mixed insulin will have an intermediate plus a short acting insulin mixed inside it. All of these have onsets of about one to two hours, action of about four, hour, four to six hours and duration for about 12 hours. And the last type is the long acting insulin. The long acting insulin has an onset of about one to two hours, but it doesn't have any peak. It normally has a duration. Some have of 12 hours, some have of 24 hours. This is normally your basal insulin, which takes care of your sugars in periods of fasting and rest. So what we're gonna put over here somewhere on the screen is an insulin chart, which you can see all the durations, the onsets, the peaks, and the generic names of the different types of insulin. So why don't you spot which one you are using so you can better understand your insulin. There are several different types of insulin regimens. Like I said, the effort is to mimic the natural physiology. Some people are on a fixed dose regimen, which means that they take either a pre-mixed insulin or they take some human insulin at fixed parts of the day. This is, it's a good option. However, it does not allow too much flexibility um, in your day-to-day -day activities. That way, when you're on a fixed dose regimen, you need to ensure that your meal timings are the same, your exercise timings are the same, what you're eating most of the time is also same. Uh, this is in comparison to the basal bolus regimen, which includes the long acting and the rapid acting insulin, where you need to uh, count your carbs and inject for what you're eating. This does allow a little bit more flexibility for your daily life. Well, whatever regimen you are on, whatever insulin you are on, knowledge is power. It's very important to know the characteristics, the regimen, the strength of the insulin you are using so that you can take type 1 diabetes management into your own hands. And the final message always is never stop your insulin. For us, people living with type 1 diabetes, insulin is like air and water. We need it to survive. So know more about it, never stop it and live happily with your insulin. Thank you all so much. I'll see you again in the next video. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Share it with your fellow Daya buddies, share it with your family. And remember that you are so totally type one of a kind.